Hello again, all you bean Roethlisbergers out there. I don't take that as an insult. And welcome to week nine of Small Beans, Small Beans News, and Extra Extra, which are confusingly all kind of one thing, I guess. Uh, this is week nine of Small Beans' existence, which makes this your week nine, State of the Beanian. Let's dip on into it. This week's profile in beaniness, uh, I would like to shout out Whitney Altine Nut or Altine Nut. We didn't communicate via voice, but she kindly offered to, and then indeed did, send me a first edition copy of Harlan Ellison's Dangerous Visions, which is a collectible at this point, uh, rightly knowing and surmising and learning and other synonyms for that, that Harlan Ellison is my favorite author of all time, even though I was contractually obligated to say Kurt Vonnegut was the greatest author of all time. It was a filthy lie, and my heart broke every time I said it. No, that's not true. They're both great. But I encourage you to check out Harlan Ellison's works and send loving good vibes to Whitney Altine Nutt. I wanted to address why Dan and Mike are fighting, which I mentioned on last week's episode, is not out yet. We're not just teasing you. Uh, unfortunately, well, it went very well. It, we recorded for a two, two and a half hours, but there was a technical error, which I may have mentioned last week. I'm not sure. It happened last week, but that technical error persists, and I'm very dedicated, obviously, to getting that episode out, but it's really proving difficult, which is fitting for an episode about contentiousness and strife. So uh, that will be coming out. I don't know when, but it will be here on the Small Beans Network, and I hope you will stay tuned for that. Uh, obviously, you probably noticed, if you are a big enough of a fan, that all everything was late this week. Other than our first podcast, everything was late. You're hearing this late. It is now Monday of the following week, which is really bad. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but right after this, I'm also going to release Soren's Tales from the Pit. And, of course, our Tuesday podcast coming out tomorrow, when you're listening to this, will be one-upsmanship and uh, that's going to be on the topic of Bioshock Infinite this week with special guest Tom Ryman. Uh, but yeah, so the, the reasons we were late um, on everything this week amount to illness, technical issues. Uh, we, we played D&D on Saturday. If you're interested, check that out on the Gamefully Unemployed channel. And last but not least, and most importantly and most pertinent to you, a vast panoply of exciting new projects. Abe and I shot our first five videos, which are just honestly little improv ditties uh, for the feed, but I'm, I'm going to be editing those and putting those up soon. We also knocked out two out of six scripts for our first web series called Disney Owns You. We've begun reaching out to people about casting that, finding locations, getting everything set up. So things were late. You haven't seen the results of why, but you will very soon. We also have two new podcasts coming to the slate very soon. And I'll have more about that later. Uh, very importantly, this is not the last warning you'll get about this, but here comes the first one. Our model, our Patreon model, is switching over soon. Very soon we will be switching to a pay-per-content instead of pay-per-month model. What that means to you is that as we roll out more and more types of content and our backlog just gets deeper and deeper... We want your membership to mean something. There are going to be three levels of membership, four if you count free. So there's free, $1 a month, $3 a month, $5 a month. For free, you will get access to roughly a third of our content, 33.3 bar percent. Uh, for a dollar a month, you get access to roughly 50% of our content. For $3 a month, you get access to 75%. And for $5, you get access to 99.7%, no, 100% of our content. Um, so yes, most of you are already in the Cool Beans Club, which is our $5 a month level. Thank you so much. That means so much. And we want to show you that your membership holds real value. So you're going to have access to exclusive content. All you people who can't afford stuff like that, don't worry, there's still going to be an ocean of free stuff. And if you can swing a dollar a month, we really hope you will. And then you'll get every other episode of everything we ever do. So we're going to try that for a while. Uh, but if, obviously, everyone unanimously says this is bullshit, then we won't do it. But I brought this up once before and most people said, no, that sounds fair. You probably should do that. So we're going to try it. We're going to try that soon. I guess that's it. We're still trying to expand, obviously, uh, after our first web series, which is just people at a conference table, we'd like to get more ambitious. So we need to keep growing. Tell friends about us. Give us reviews on iTunes. Five-star ratings on iTunes help us get up in the algorithm listings. Download the show. 
anything you can do, please. Mainly just word of mouth. Tell people you like the show if you like the show. And to see if you like the show, let's turn it over to the show portion of this show with a showman I show myself to be when I do the show named Johnny Papes with this week's episode of Extra Extra. Extra, extra, read all about it, Small Beans News, the only weekly news program of written well old Simpsons episodes play in the background. That's the Small Beans promise. Extra, extra, Elon Musk's company SpaceX, named after the most extreme form of space, fired a rocket called the Heavy Falcon, sending a roadster into space with a crash test dummy at the steering wheel named Starman, after the David Bowie song, and it's not even the mid-90s. J.J. Abrams plans to adapt the story to become Cloverfield 5, which he claims will explain everything for realsies this time. Read all about it. Read all about it. The Winter Olympics is a thing that has begun in Pyeongchang, South Korea. America sent Vice President Mike Pence as their delegate, a controversial choice that proved awkward when Pence attempted to rush a shirtless, flag-waving athlete from Tonga and convince him to pray the gay away. NBC newscasters are also under fire for an interview in which they made light of the Japanese occupation of South Korea, for which they have since apologized, saying, quote, Logan Paul got his YouTube channel back, so we thought this whole thing had blown over. Remaining Olympic events include sliding down snow laying down, sliding down snow on a board sitting down with some friends, sliding down snow standing up on a small board, sliding down snow standing up on two separate boards, sliding in between flags standing up on two boards in the snow, sliding down snow standing up on two boards then sliding up some snow then being in the air for a bit, sliding on flat snow standing up on two boards whilst firing a rifle like a madman and figure skating. Extra, extra. Recently unemployed local man cannot help but calculate the cost of all of his wall art and cool pop culture collectibles, precious few of which are edible or wearable. Read all about it, read all about it. Scientists have developed a form of synthetic plastic skin, meant for robots, capable of healing itself when cut or ripped apart. After all, said the project lead, when the robot uprising eventually comes, we want them to be basically immortal. The National Committee of Science and Lack of Foresight has praised the effort from the same team that brought us laser eyes, gun hands, and a robot's ability to conceptualize humans as a disease infecting the earth. Extra, extra, read all about it. Researchers have fitted praying mantises with tiny versions of blue and red 3D glasses in order to learn about the nature of stereoscopic vision and novelty films of the 1980s. By understanding how mantises are able to capture their prey using movement rather than depth as their index, the scientists hope to create a more efficient form of stereoscopic vision that can be programmed into AI or machinery. After all, said the project lead, when the immortal robot uprising eventually comes, we want them to be able to slash at nearby humans with ease and grace. A similar revolution is occurring in drone technology, where programmers have developed a more efficient way for drones to navigate obstacles at high speeds, based on the way hawks do the same. After all, said the project lead, when the... Then he was ripped apart by the mighty slash of an immortal robot drone. Extra, extra is the name of this show, the lowest performing show on our network, which takes the most effort to create. Screw you, efficiency! Read all about it, read all about it. PepsiCo has backtracked on their Super Bowl ad, which promoted softer Doritos for female consumers, claiming it was a joke and tweeting, quote, we already have Doritos for women. They're called Doritos. Later adding, quote, intergender Doritos coming soon, if you want that, unless you don't, in which case it was a hilarious viral joke ad. Doritos Tide Pods coming spring 2018. Extra, extra, a new study has linked bacon, coffee, and Nutella all to an increased cancer risk, immediately ruining my favorite sandwich and the latest planned Starbucks Frappuccino flavor. Doritos Tide Pods Frappuccino still available. The heads of the project, Grinch, Scrooge, and Fuckface, have been jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in destroying what little pre-Armageddon pleasure we have left. Extra, extra, read all about it. Underdogs, the Philadelphia Eagles, won the Super Bowl eight days ago. News you almost certainly no longer feel any sense of urgency over which just goes to show it never really mattered in the first place unless your car got flipped over by rioters or you received a concussion. Hooray, Super Bowl! Meanwhile, my petition to pit actual eagles against actual patriots continues to fall on deaf ears. Read all about it. Read all about it.
it. Valentine's Day has come and gone, and at least one of you listening to this briefly freaked out because I said that, but it's not actually true. You're off the hook. Please return to ignoring your partner's needs for 48 more hours before scrambling to buy some waxy chocolates. x x Purdue Pharma, the nation's top producer of OxyContin, has slashed their sales force and vowed to stop selling the drug directly to doctors, said one pharma exec. We can't in good conscience keep killing our fellow Americans at obscene profits for longer than 30 years now that we've been caught. Anyway, our ongoing deal with Rush Limbaugh more than takes care of the surplus. Extra, extra, read all about it, read all about it! Subversive horror director Michael Haneke, Funny Games, The White Ribbon, and President Donald Trump, ruining the world, both came out this week against the Me Too and Time's Up movements, calling them dangerous witch hunts that threaten to destroy innocent men with false accusations. The figures make strange bedfellows as one orchestrates crimes, sexual assaults, and madness for profit, whereas Michael Haneke just makes movies about those things. Zing! Extra, extra! Read all about it! Stock market on bumpy ride, dropping more than 1,000 points, then recovering 400. Results widely seen as fears around potential inflation inflation and wage increases, rather than a sign that the entire fabric of our economy is built on imaginary bullshit, mutated a thousand times a second by computer algorithms and sociopaths in blue coats. People with enough extra money to toss it into the mystery box and see what happens are reportedly worried. In related news, Small Beans goes public, valued at 14 November 2019 bitcoins per share, minus the difference between today and tomorrow's Dow Jones Index. Do you feel lucky? Punk? Extra, extra. Read all about it. Nab your new news now. Well, it's new. Neither nascent nor old. There's no synonym for old that starts with N. Look it up. Read all about it. Read all about it. NASA has broken its own record for pictures taken the farthest and indeed the furthest away from Earth and indeed your house. The New Horizons spacecraft beamed back images of two space rocks in the Kuiper asteroid belt, more than 3.5 billion miles distant. Astronauts have tentatively agreed to return to space. Now that this proves there are no Cloverfield paradoxes, Mars attackers, Decepticons, or Kronos and Classic Infundibuli in the area. Nope, replied the New Horizons probe. Just these extinction event level sized rocks all around, hurtling mindlessly in every direction. You're totally safe. These will remain the final words from the probe as it travels ever outward into the unknown reaches of the universe. Unless, of course, it bumps into Tesla's Starman and bums a ride back. Read all about it, read all about it. Printer fails to work even after pressing all the buttons and downloading new drivers, comma, local man instinctively contemplates suicide. x extra. President Trump has come under fire for demanding a parade of US military technology, a move many see as dictatorial and unnecessary. Not literally come under fire, obviously obviously since he'd kill the hell out of you. But staffers, pundits, and veterans on both sides of the aisle are decrying the decision. Handlers have reportedly let the president drive several big boy trucks to see if that would get it out of his system. But as a public service, we are announcing that if you see men marching down the street carrying assault rifles, please know that it could be any one of the following. Insane open carry advocates, actual white supremacists, ludicrously overarmed local police, a mass shooting, or a sanctioned and totally patriotic political event to celebrate what a great nation we are. Rest of world reports, you guys, you really don't have to do this. Everyone's already pretty fucking scared. Trump swears he will persist with the pageant anyway, and that it will parade from, quote, whatever street LeVar Ball lives on, all the way to the border wall, which will be done by the time we get there. Also, we'll travel exclusively on freshly paved new roads, and everyone gets ice cream. Extra, extra. Climatologists warn the ocean will be primarily populated by stinging jellyfish by the year 2050. In related news, mosquitoes are the only kind of bug that will survive, and the only tree we'll have around are those ones that smell like cum. Extra, extra, read all about it. Taking her job title more literally than is traditional, Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi delivered a record-breaking speech in the House of Representatives this week, orating for over eight hours in defense of Dreamers allowed citizenship under DACA. Republican lawmakers have been quick to point 
point out that it amounts to little more than political grandstanding, and maybe a futile gesture, as pointless and unimportant as the end of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, or all of the Care Bears except the grumpy one with the storm cloud on him. They have also assured constituents that despite intermittent government shutdowns, ICE will continue to put the dreams of dreamers on ICE. Quote, we wouldn't want something as trivial as not being able to function as a government to prevent us from deporting thousands of hardworking taxpayers at a time when our economy is unpredictable. We're not idiots. In solidarity with Miss Pelosi, I, Johnny Papes, will now deliver a nine-hour speech supporting said dreamers. Ahem. What is a dream? Webster's Dictionary defines a dream as a goal, ambition, fantasy, or nocturnal somnambulism coupled with neuronal firing. Oh boy. And he just goes on like that. All right. Well, you guys should probably get going. I will see you next week. Hopefully by then, Papes will be out of... Papes will be pooped. I don't know. I got nothing. It's a good time to end the episode. I love you.